Hello and welcome to Respect the Crit. I'm your host and game master, Ian Duncan, and I am joined by some incredible people. Firstly, Jamie Lee Bonez. Hello, I am Jamie and I play Elo, the modified medical droid who is hoping to renew this year. Oh, renew. I like that theme, like mm -hmm. new year renewal, like, oh, that's cool. I, I like <laughs> it. Yeah. And also joining us in this celebration of renewal is Alex Herrera. Hi, I'm Alex and I play Bigax, the Doug Slicer. No renewal here. Just no same renewal. Old, same no. old Doug. <laughs> <laughs> no new year, new you, just... No, same, same old. Bigax isn't, he's like, ah, same, same year, same me. Don't matter. <laughs> I like that it's consistent, you know? <laughs> There's just that, like, consistent level of, of begaxery. No more, no less. D do the two of you have any New Year's resolutions, either in character or out of character? Well, I guess it's not a New Year for your characters. Well, I have a diet now, because I have to. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's I don't it's know mandatory. <laughs> yeah, mandatory diet. <laughs> it's good, you know? It's pretty good. I'm enjoying eating lettuce. Nice. And if you put like the great stuff in it, salads can be really great too. We do like cheese crumbles, like goat cheese crumbles because it's- <gasps> I love goat cheese. Oh, so good. Mm. Goat cheese and honey is like, that's when you know you made it. <sighs> <laughs> that's when you know you've made oh, it, yeah. even a if, good even salad. If you, no, 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 goat <laughs> cheese, like you get the, the, okay, I know it's called a sharpshootery board, but I call it a sharpshootery board because one of my old coworkers and her husband <laughs> call it that. Because <laughs> he's from Germany and he couldn't say the word. So he called it, I'll have a sharpshootery board. And I was like, oh my God. I want to call it that forever. <laughs> I'm trying to make it a thing, man. Very cool. Well, yeah, as you said, uh, your for your characters, it's not a new year. They're still in the, the same place we left them. So uh, let's jump into it. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Episode 31, Momentum. Zalto the Hutt is dead. His grip on Sokoro severed, much to the elation of the criminal triumvirate that governs the planet. But before his corpulent corpse can cool, the fearless fringers Ello and Bigax must enact the rest of their plan to throw Sokoro into chaos in order to escape the system. Their troubles far from over, Bigax and Allo scramble to keep their element of surprise as the Empire's shadow looms in its search for the Surly Dog Slicer and his stolen Imperial intelligence. Will the Crime Lord Triumvirate keep their end of a bitter bargain? Will a swift retaliation come from the hot homeworld? Will the Empire crack down on this frontier town? Freedom hangs in the balance for our star-weary wanderers. Let's go ahead and roll a destiny roll. Oh, man. Get I already saw the Twitter poll. I saw that. Points on the board. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The wills of the force. The wills of the Twitter. force have spoken. Yeah, they don't want. They, they want us to die. I have one dark side point. I have two light side points. Thank God. You've been you've been saving us. I also have one dark side point. And yes, as uh, as you mentioned in our Twitter poll at respect the crit. We sort of shoot that out, um, you know, about a day before we do our game, just to like see, uh, just to ask the wills of the force what side of the force they are feeling. And that side was unnegotiably dark side. Um, so you have an additional dark side point that once is used up, evaporates from the game. It doesn't, it no longer becomes a point that can convert to the light side. So yeah, also the the result for dark side was 69%. Uh, percent. Nice. Yeah, it was very nice. So nice. thank you, Wills. You have set, <laughs> you have set us off on, at, on the new year uh, in, a, in a great way, so. We see a enormous tower. We're sort of like at the height of it. And we can see in the dusty horizon the 
whole city of Achaea and sort of like an opposing tower of Sokoljaw spaceport poking up like twin ivory spears amongst the dusty, sandy city. But from our vantage point at the top of the Hut Casino, a building that is unfinished but built lavishly up to rival the skies and rival the spaceport, this edifice to unfinished ambition is what we're looking at because down below the person whose dream this casino was is laying broken and splatted amongst the very materials and industrial equipment uh, that was meant to build this tower. Zalto the Hut uh, lays dead among this pile of, uh, of metal and, and scrap. And up above is, uh, looking down on this, through the wind now, like, rushing through the broken shards of a large panoramic window uh, at the top of this casino, are two beings sort of looking down, and that is a droid and a dug. Jamie, let's start with Ello. Why don't you give us a, a description of what Ello looks like, um, general appearance, that kind of thing, and... So maybe even what they're thinking at this moment. So Ello is at this point looking a bit worse for wear. There's scrapes to their exterior, which is an amalgamation of parts from different types of droids and, and different series of different droids, all of which that have been modified to be of some medical use. They are currently holding out their disruptor pistol and looking down, looking down this large building um, at the hut below and is probably thinking to themselves, well, that was unexpected. Uh, and because they have no filter, will say that out loud to their companion. And it shows up like when Ello talks, it shows up as like a visible waveform file in the front of their face, correct? That's sort of like... Yes, it's definitely like a screen like a, that has that? Like a screen with an audio wave file that moves as they're speaking. Yes, and they it's also been established they have sort of lights for eyes. Right, yeah. Bleep, bleep. Little blinky, little blinky lights. They also have Barney, which is like an attachment onto them, usually just attached onto their shoulder, which is another medical droid device yeah yeah a little orb like little medical droid mm -hmm. um a little assistant an assistant doctor i want to <laughs> nurse is that nurse yes that that's what it was i was thinking <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking sue chef but that's <laughs> <laughs> sue doctor. That's not what it is yeah i was like sue doctor but that's not what it is <laughs> nurse you are right a little nurse droid and they turn to this doug alex what give us a description of of Bigax, uh, what he's looking like, uh, th things on him, and uh, what's going on. So, New Year Bigax, because this is, uh, I'm describing him, season two. Bigax has this kind of gray, almost black complexion with a lighter brown underneath shade, um, as all dogs have the kind of two tone pattern. He's got, right now, he's wearing this pretty basic tunic i don't remember what color so i'm just gonna say that it is uh i'm gonna give it sakoran colors i'm gonna say it's got the royal blue that that blue tint that we discussed earlier with hints of purple kind of like along the edges of it he does have gloves on the feet that or the hands that he uses as feet two on the ground on the ground so that he doesn't you know ruin the padding on his hands so he can still use them he has inside of his tunic a gun like a, a shoulder gun holster for his disruptor pistol which is currently in his hand the the holster's still there empty uh his face has patches of lighter complexion because when he's stressed out he does the chin rubbing thing and he does it very aggressively he has these kind of uh he has this facial hair that's also be, can be considered like a, a mixture of whiskers with hair where they're beaded they're braided down there's about like i would say three or four braids down 
Uh, the beads are things of like no consequence, just kind of cosmetic items. Uh, his eyes, I've never described his eyes. I've always envisioned them as like that brown with yellow iris that's circular, almost like a like a predatory creature. Oh, without, cool. Not yeah. the, not the, like the crazy angled, but just the coloration of like the, the irises or the pupils. I forget which one's the outer circle. And uh, yeah, he's looking down at this hut, this, the mess, the, the mess that was a hut at the very bottom of this construction, this hotel construction site or casino construction site. And he'll, in his mind, he's thinking like, ah, that was, in his voice, ah, that was a bad idea. Uh, just looking at, because I think there was a desk that was pushed to push him out also. I'm not sure if the desk fell or not. The desk, the desk is out, out the window, did. yeah. Pushed oh, pushed out. It's like, if you look down, you can see where it's sort of like, cr- like crushed uh, half of the hut as he's like uh, broken there, yeah. Very nice uh, desk. Once a nice desk. Now just like smooshed like a bug. Yeah. Or smooshed the hut like a bug. So he looks down and then he looks back to Elo and asks him, Well, uh, should we get picked up here? And he'll turn around because he remembers that there were other enemies here and he wants to know what they're doing there was like a big kerfuffle there was a lot of people here and uh including some like armed weekwe which were sort of the the sort of like guards of this hut or the henchmen of this of this hut uh and most of those people have uh were when this whole thing kicked off they cl- were like clambering out towards the elevator, which brought them up to this top level. So a lot of them have gone. A few remain just sort of like uh, huddled at the backs, kind of like panicking and afraid. Um, there is a there is one of these weak way, um, but he's sort of like broken down from fear a little bit uh, that things have, you know, he just saw like boss get kicked out the window and like this droid sort of like blow blow everyone away uh with very little emotion so he's kind of like not feeling his that it's worth it to uh you know to keep this going on anymore in the office uh, i mean right now some things have been sort of like thrown about some of the like the cool statues and and um and art pieces have been like knocked over from having this ruckus. Yeah, there's sort of like wind and sand coming in. And you see the way like coming from the tower towards you um, at this moment, getting ready to pick you up or at least rendezvous at the top of this tower. Oh, we're going to the top. Are we going to get picked up from the broken glass? How, how? <laughs> Are we going to jump? In? <laughs> uh... I mean, it's up to you. You've, 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 you can come in however however you want to do it i mean it would be cool to jump onto the ship but if we fail <laughs> that'd be it yeah dude, that's the end of the song you know what i always want i want to make a wookie yeah i'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> no i think yeah we should get picked up on the top on the rooftop okay. if this because this is his office was at the very top so we just have to go up like right. a flight of stairs i'm assuming there's a flight of stairs or something we can go up nearby sure yeah roof access yeah no no problem there because we're not using the lift i know that for a fact we're not using that thing mm. somebody's gonna hack it or something and we're gonna end up falling um oh what are the citizens that he wanted us to kill doing they're all trying to get out i mean they most of them got out yeah, they like they. I think a lot of them like got into the elevator, try and ride it back down. There's still some in the office with you that are like, ah, or just sort of like cowering, you know, like finding cover as as Lo had instructed. But they're they they pose no threat and they don't seem to want to have anything to do with this other than just to leave. Oh man, it's like uh, NPCs in like GTA. They're like <laughs> yeah, yeah. just freaking out, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, Big X is gonna go to the bodies of the uh, Weeque who were downed, and just start like he he's in full scumbag mode. He's rummaging through their pockets, seeing what he can get, and he's gonna look to Elo, find us a way to the roof. That's exactly what Elo would do: is start looking for the way to the roof, and would say, Big X, we don't have time. We have to go. Ah, hold on, hold on. And he's looking specifically in for any like other guns or stuff because we have a crew now. We need to outfit them properly. Oh, I see. Um, I mean, yeah, they they have. Uh, give me a sec. I can tell you exactly what they got. Um, one of them just has a standard blaster rifle, uh, blaster carbine, I believe is what it's called. 
the others just have uh, uh, standard or just like blaster pistols. And I think there's only two weak way that are down. The rest have like escaped. Yeah. Um, or run away. So yeah, I'd say you can pick up a rifle and a and a blaster. Um, Perfect. A pistol, like a rifle and a pistol, if you want. Yeah. So as Elo tells him, tells him that he can. Yeah, yeah, I know. And he picks up the the carbine, right? And he'll. I, I'm just gonna assume it has like a strap, so he'll strap it over his shoulder. And he picks up the the blaster pistol, flips it around, and puts that in the holster in his in his tunic. But he keeps it dis- his disruptor pistol out. And he looks to like the people who are cowering, and he goes. Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, he just like nods, gives him like a gross smile because he doesn't know how to smile correctly. <laughs> and then just like walks towards Ello. And Ello is able to find roof access. Where, like, what do you what do you think that it is here? Give me a scan, Ello. Yeah, you like boop, boop, scan the room. What do you see? Uh, Ello is going to scan the room, which is the, this is the the hut's office, right? And we had sort of established. It's like a whole penthouse level. Yeah, like you're gotcha. standing in the office. Yeah, but, and you, okay. and if you look down the hall, you can see the elevator where the, that kind of thing's happening. There's some other rooms and stuff. Gotcha. But you can, you find the roof access. Yeah, you just tell me where it is and. I picture it more in through, like, the where you, they would have, like, the servants walk through. Like, oh, through kitchen access, you can access the roof, you know? Because what's the boss going to need to do on the roof? So probably, like, on the turn of a corner and past, past some sort of kitchen, we'd have to go through in order to get up to the roof. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I like that. So, yeah, there's, like, can I add something onto that? Because I of just course. saw this... Yeah, I saw this uh, like on some video and I thought it was cool. There was like it was like a kitchen and then like the cabinet opened up. Or, there was like a false cabinet and so like the cab the the countertop like hinged open and you <gasps> opened up the like false cabinet and it led to a stairway that was like yes. a back door. And I was like, "Oh, that's so cool." So like, that yeah, maybe cool. you you like scan it, you see this hollow thing, it it opens up um and you, yeah, it's sort of like this this door that opens up in a part of the kitchen, and it's hut sized, uh, obviously, <laughs> so it's not like super mm-hmm. narrow. Um, <laughs> but you can go up, and yeah, it looks like they were building sort of like like a very small craft, um, like a helipad, like we would have a helipad or something on there. Um, you can go up there, and the the way is waiting for you um, with the uh, cargo bay down. Um, and you can climb aboard. Ello will climb aboard. Though Jamie wants to know, was there a safe in there that we totally could have found? There's no time, Jamie. Come on, There's we no gotta time. go. There's no time. I know. I <laughs> know. <laughs> Don't tell me, actually. <laughs> well, I was going to have you roll for it. I mean, you did a scan of the room, right? So. I did do a scan of the room. So Ella would know. Maybe we can come back. Uh, there's no coming. There's no... There's no coming back to Sakura. I think it's perception. I know that's not your favorite oh, no, skill, but I, I think that's what it is. Here, let me pull up my new thing to see. I sh- that's See, I was trying to think of the ones that I needed to buff up. <laughs> You're right. You're it's perception right. for next time. I could time. have done it. Yeah, because I have a. it's my career skill and I only have two greens. It would have cost me ten. I'm one green for perception. That's how. That's exactly how many points you left, uh, left no, over. Oh, I'm a fool. <laughs> Okay. Oh, we'll call it an average check, but I think because he's a gangster, it's probably a hidden, sa- right. hidden safe. So we'll give you a black die, not a full on. Okay, so two purple and a black. One failure, one threat. Oh, God. So the failure is you don't find the, the safe. The threat is... I'm going to let Jamie know there's definitely a safe <laughs> here. God <laughs> yeah, damn it. That's the threat. <laughs> damn it. Oh, you know what would be even worse is a threat, and I'm sorry for to say this, is that when Elo scans it, they see how much is in there, and they can't. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's five billion credits. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, no. Elo couldn't find it, but Jamie could. So mm-hmm. Jamie Jamie scans in real life yep. and mm-hmm. knows that there's like 100,000 credits in there or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's my secret talent. You get on the way, and it sort of, uh, and, and it takes off away from the casino. I'm just thinking about who might be there, because I think everyone's pretty much on the ship. No one's sticking around, because everyone's sort of, like, getting ready to go. So, yeah, we'll say, like, we'll say Verse comes out, and um, Verse is a human uh, woman, a native of Sokoro. And she's got real short, buzzed hair. 
long dark jacket and she comes out as you guys come aboard the ship how did it go big x looks to elo eh. looks diverse i assume we're sitting in like the the common area where like the the table is he'll just put the two weapons on the table uh we got uh got some weapons for the crew uh oh yeah the hut's dead uh that happened wait what back up hut's dead like yes. like dead dead yeah uh, he starts doing the chin rub you see he wanted us and we needed the materials for his body clone double whatever you want to call it he thought that uh we would be okay with killing a lot of workers and using their material to equate to his size that was not part of the plan so I pushed him out a window we weren't really given a choice okay okay um did anyone see were there any witnesses does anyone know it was you <laughs> oh yeah yeah there's a bunch of workers the ones who were gonna die saw us ah, a couple of those weak way guys that he's got uh, we killed two of them before the others kind of panicked after I pushed them out of the window. They kind of realized, oh, oh, Criff, this guy means business. Which, actually, if I'm going to be quite honest, and he looks to Ella when he says this, that felt really good. Not pushing me out the window, but the fear that they had for me, that was, that's new. <laughs> really like that. Verse, is ju- Verse just kind of like, like covers her face and uh, uh, like she's thinking. She just kind of like zones out and she as she's like taking this in and she's like, okay, okay, um just like making some mental calculations all right uh i i don't think that that doesn't change too much for us that just moves up our timeline like really fast uh, i mean it, it, yeah it's actually it's kind of better if you think about it because instead of actually having a, a body double we have a real dead hut and that kind of yeah we you know takes away some complications for sure absolutely it's like that one hollow game where you pass the start space and you get 200 credits right at the beginning oh, yeah spaceopoly spaceopoly yeah that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're just playing a big game of spaceopoly bgax that's what we're doing well i mean i'm pretty good at it i had seven brothers and sisters so <laughs> gotta know how to stay on top yeah you mean you're good at cheating that's what you mean right oh that's part of the game yeah absolutely <laughs> What's next then? Uh, the triumvirate. We gotta, we gotta set up a meeting then. Oh yeah. Did you start the recording? Oh wait. And he'll get up. He'll get out of the, the common area seat and start like, Doug, waddling over to where Gur's chamber is, his quarters, and he'll start, boom, 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 bang on the door. Gur. Uh yes. You got the recording. Yes, I did. He comes out. He like, gives you a data pad or something. He's like, it's all here. Uh, I was watching it back. It's pretty amusing. It's pretty good, right? Uh, it's real good. I like the. I really like the part you kicking the desk and knocking him out the window. I mean, that is good stuff. That's like, that is like action hollow stuff. Yeah, I thought the same thing when it happened afterwards. I was like, oh, I should be an actor. Anyways, thanks, big guy. And then Allo coming out with that gun, just boom, pop that guy. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, they, I never knew Elo had that kind of stuff in them. They, uh, they're pretty surprising. Should have been there with the sandstorm and the tornado. That was something. Anyways, he'll he'll take the data pad. Thanks. And he'll waddle back to verse, and he'll say he'll put it on the table. We need to get this to them with the message that it's done. Right. Okay. And then I guess we got to get you on the Star Destroyer. You got any thoughts on that? Uh, honestly, I've been blocking out that part of the plan in my mind the entire time. Not exactly thrilled to jump back into the, you know, nest of the beast, so to speak. What are you saying? Are you getting cold feet? No, never, never. And he'll, like, shake it off and he'll look back at verse. Just, uh, need to work on those codes, I guess. All right, if you want to get to work on that, I guess, hello, you want to get set up with the triumvirate, get that meeting set as soon as possible. I mean, if people find out, if the wrong people find out that you really killed the hut, that's going to be a big problem for all of us. And then you're not going to have a problem with the hut. You're going to have a problem with me. Well, seeing as how you agree to be part of the crew. 
Yeah, that means you can't get rid of me now. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I believe that uh, I'll do my best to make sure we're all safe. Not that I'm purposefully trying to burn bridge- bridges. It's just that uh, I'm not okay with killing common folk, workers. That doesn't sit right with me. So if it meant either five or however many people there were dying or one hut dying, I'll take the hut every time. She like nods at that. We should also talk about the tower too. I mean, if you get control of the... When you get control of the guns. We gotta make sure to just target the triumvirate. There's a lot of people in those towers. I really don't want to be labeled a terrorist. Huh. Yeah. Big X thinks about it. You know, I don't think I've got that moniker yet under my belt. Terrorist. That's a new one. I'm not looking forward or even trying to get that one. That's, uh... That involves a whole different section of the Imperials coming after you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe we can fake, like, a fire alarm. I'm pretty good at that. Oh. Maybe we could get people out, oh, but that means the triumvirate leaves too, right? If they're trying to leave fire thing. He'll, he'll stop first. Not if I shut down the lift. It's gonna be a couple different spikes or slices that have to go at the same time, but... And he thinks about it really hard. I think I can do it. He looks at his deck. That's like... Uh, I, I would say we're in the common area, so it's the table again. He sees it resting like on the back of the seats, just like chilling there. Ah... Uh, I got some good hardware. I think I could do it. We could hit the fire alarm, yeah, if you can shut it down. If you think you can do that, we trap them in there, zap them in there. All right, this plan's moving fast, but I like where it's going. Good. All right, let me get working on them codes. All right, should we contact through P4? That sounds good to me. I mean, you're the one with the contact. P4 it is, that's, that's fine, let's get it set up. Ugh, P4, gross. So, Things are starting to happen. Eee! Things are things are going in into motion. Hello, fringers, spacers, rebels, scum and villainy. Thanks for joining me here in hyperspace as we light speed jump through a couple of quick announcements and into the next part of the episode. Firstly, Thank you to all of those who sent kind words about our Final Fantasy VII story run by our incredible guest GM, Xavier. If you haven't had a chance to listen to those, go back and check them out. Right now, stop what you're doing in the middle of this, go and listen to them. No, don't do that. That would be crazy. Unless that's your thing. Hey, more power to you. Uh, no, they, do listen to them. They were a lot of fun. And in case you missed the announcement in those sodes, we now have an official Discord server, a place where you can discuss the episodes, talk shop about the system we're playing in, gush about the FF7 one shot we just did, or just hang out in general. The link to the Discord server is in our Twitter bio, at Respect the Crit. Come by, copy paste, and maybe give us a follow while you're at it. We post photos from our session, show schedules, episode previews, and we even do a Wills of the Force poll where you can help tip the balance of our games a little bit by voting light side or dark side, baby. That's all for now. So come on by the Discord, invite people to join, tell us what you thought about this episode when you're done listening to it. Speaking of, I see the rest of this episode coming up on my sensors, and we're about to drop out a light speed. Oh! Oh, that's no moon! Oh, crap! Oh, no! Ah, uh, goodbye! Enjoy the rest of the episode! Big X is setting some stuff up, so let's do some rolls for that. So... What all do you want to create, Alex? Uh, I would need to create something that allows me to have control of the fire systems again without actually being there, because I can't be there, right, if I'm doing the other, the Star Destroyer thing. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it has to be something that makes the tower... So the, whose cannons are going to blast the... I, I'm using the, the Star Destroyer's cannons to blast the tower, right? That's what it sounds like. And then, it's, and then the tower guns were going to blast the casino. That may have changed now that things have changed, so... You just blow up the casino either way and fuck that place. I mean, it sounds good to me. It's it's it, it seemed like the idea was to create some chaos and and nobody knows who shot who and it's just like ah, what's going on? That kind of yep. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So blowing up the casino still seems like that's part of the thing. Because if we use a Star Destroyer to blow up the Triumphant, it looks like the Imperials attacked both. I think that was the ultimate goal. I mean, it sounds like to me uh, that you're making some like custom data spikes, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Data spikes. That's what they're called. I couldn't remember their name. The little hacker programs that Benicio del Toro has on his little wrist. <laughs> Basically, yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna roll to make some of those. I think that it's going to cost you a little bit of credits to just in like resource components. You know, that that's kind fair. Of thing. Yeah, materials yeah. are like, yeah, I gotcha. Okay, yeah. So, so, and they're they're not super expensive, but like it'd be it'd be about a hundred bucks a pop. Okay, well, let's say I pay two hundred for two, just in case something happens to one of them. Well, I think what we should do is we should do these rolls and. You can make as many of these as you want with the with these like uh, functions on them, mm -hmm. and if you fail the roll, like it just costs you resources. Gotcha. Okay, sure. That sounds like a gotcha, and th that was my job back in the day. So I will <laughs> I will do it. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Is this gonna be mechanics or computers? Let's call this a computers check. The first one is to control the fire, to like trick the fire systems and saying, hey, there's a fire, turn on please. And nothing can turn it off. Like it's like an unbypassable fire alert. I think that's probably a an average check. Two purple, yeah. I feel like I'm gonna get all bad rolls this session because the last one was like fantastic. I was wrong. <laughs> 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 well tell tell our listeners what that is that is a triumph or in layman's terms a crit however it the totals one triumph three advantage two threats and one failure okay yeah so that's not a success but you got a triumph so i mean i feel like you've got it complete it's just not a hundred percent uh, like maybe it doesn't do 100% what you that you wanted it to do maybe something like that or I can use my natural programmer once per session you may reroll any one computers or astrogation check there you go yeah go you want to re you want to reroll and go for it yeah I don't want my I feel like I need to avenge that fallen triumph <laughs> no that's worse <laughs> no yeah one failure and four advantage so it's basically, it's like the same thing, but now it's a failure. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that one's a bust. Uh, yeah. you, you try and load data onto that. Um, it's It like fries it and it's like, boom, throw it out. So that's 100 credits gone. Feel free to give it a go again. You got four advantages. So I'll say you can throw in um, a blue die in there uh, now to be, now that you like, you know what you're doing now. It was like you loaded too much data on one stick or something. I should have got CDRW uh, instead of just CDR, right? Who remembers those? Ooh, okay. This is a little better. So one success, one advantage. You have a data spike that can, that'll basically like, It'll start a fire drill uh, in the tower that cannot be shut off unless the data spike is removed. Now I need one. I need to do something to lock them in. Penthouse controls need to be locked. That's going to be a bit harder of a check, I think. That one's going to be a hard check. Okay. I believe this is a wash. 100 credits down the tube. This one's just a dud. Just nothing you can do with it. 100 credits, failure. I'm just burning through our money. <laughs> I hope Ella doesn't know. <laughs> Jamie's shaking her head. <laughs> I can't see because I have the minimized. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, we'll have to go again as Big X like frights. Ah, Griff. Go for it. Now, I am, I'm looking at two light side points here. Too. Nope. No, no, no. no I'm, not wait I'm waiting until you start using some of yours, but... Oh, God. <laughs> okay, one failure and one threat. Got it. All right, that is another failure. So that's 400 credits. I just picture B-Ganks getting more and more frustrated, and he just keeps making the stupidest little mistakes now, where it's just like, <laughs> he just grabs a new one, and then, oh, shoot, I touched the wrong wire. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, he just, he forgets to ground himself, and he's like frying parts as he's like plugging in. I'm like, ah, <laughs> quiff. All right. Well, if this doesn't work, one more time, I'm gonna stop. I don't know what to do. Please get it right, buddy. Get it right. Come on. Oh no. <laughs> Two failures. <laughs> 500 credits gone. Uh, okay, Big X is going to visibly be upset. He's like, ah, what the crap? And like everyone, I think everyone in the, on the ship can hear him just like clacking away. And then you hear like all these noises of like failure. Like, bang, like alerts or parts <laughs> frizzing out. And he's like, ah. He starts like rubbing his face vigorously like, ah. ah. There's just looked, swearing down, like you hear through the hall, and like yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, Creed just covers his ears. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna look. You guys gonna look at the data pad, and it has like a running count, his bank account. He's like, burr, burr, burr. It's like ah. and he'll look to. I, I say, Elo. I, I assume they're down the hall somewhere. He's gonna look down the hall, like, okay, I'm gonna go one more time. And he's gonna get another one of those little empty CDRW things, <laughs> the equivalent of them. Plug it into his deck, and he's gonna try one last time. All right, and now just to check, are you sure you don't want to use a light side point? <sighs> I'll use a light side point. All right, we're flipping a light side point. So we've got four dark side, one light side. Uh, upgrade one of your one of your greens to a yellow. That's all I had to do because it is a crit and we gotta respect the, that crit then that is a success and that's not only a success that's a triumph that is a critical success so you've spent 600 credits you're able to make a program that firstly um can just be boom shoved in and creates a a like a fire system override um, that can't be turned off unless the data spike is removed. And you've also managed to make a data spike that locks down a uh, a certain series of of doors. Now, the, the data spikes have to be manually put in, but your programs should function once they are installed, basically. But there's got to be a little something extra for that triumph, I think. So what do we think that is? I'm opening it up to everyone, because I would like it to be... Not only did I do the lock-in for Penthouse, but it has activation. It has I have control over the lights for that floor. Okay. So that when I'm firing the guns from the ship for the Imperial Star Destroyer. Oh, you have maybe a I have a Yeah, something like, oh, okay, that hack is on, and then just boop, bah, like Yeah, like, mm. that's uh, that's very cool. I think that's really good. Yeah. So you have a way of like signaling to yourself. Because it's a triumph, like there's a way to signal to yourself visually, but also like a way to read that from systems. Um, say you don't have like a visual thing on it, you know, but like you could read it like there's fire stuff going on up there or like a ping or something. So it's like that's yeah. where it is. Yeah, that's super cool. I, I dig that a lot. Yeah, well, it took some time, but you managed to do it. Now, is there anything else? that you want to make. I think I have to change some codes so that we have Imperial transponder codes to get up there, right? So you got to you got to fake some codes now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I don't know if you want to write too. I have in my notes you made a little like fake code cylinder for um LO so that they can basically open any door in the tower that they need. That was from a while back. Oh. Yeah. Sweet. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, keep that. I don't have that. <laughs> that's that's right. I don't have that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, go ahead and do these codes. Imperial codes. That's gonna be a daunting check. Yeah, I knew it. That's uh two reds or one red? Um nope, that's just four purple. Oh no, because I won't be able to tell. No no no, I have to roll them separately. Because I have one green. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter. So that's four failures, one threat, and one triumph total. So And a triumph? Did you say Dang. a triumph? Yeah, I got a triumph, yeah. Whoa! But Alex, you're on a streak. streak. But they're it's like they're triumphs against walls of failure. So it doesn't, <laughs> yeah. doesn't mean anything. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it sucks. But. I think you know what I think it is? Is I think that 
their older codes, sir, but they check out. I was going to let them through oh. kind of thing, you know, like and there's a chance that they could fail. <laughs> yeah. Or you know what it is? Oh, here's what here's what I think it is with those failures and that triumph there. Those codes could get you on board. But as soon as they are pinged, countdown starts like those things get refreshed uh, uh-huh. uh you know like those codes are are getting refreshed and so they're only useful for a limited amount of time i gotcha okay yeah that's fine yeah so be guess we'll finish clickety clacking away the he'll get a sequence of numbers and letters for the codes and he'll look at him and he'll immediately being former isb is like ah griff these aren't gonna last long but he makes sure verse isn't an earshot and he like finishes the job. Boop. <laughs> Rip them all out, stick them in his uh stick them in his in his holster, his little wrist guard. Yep. <sighs> Hello. What's happening? What's happening getting this meeting set up? Uh well, Ello I think is going to go to where Comms is and is going to try to FaceTime before comms would be just like up at the front at the, of the of the ship like with all the in the in sort of the like cockpit area it's like a whole comms thing and yeah you dial up p4's number bloop, they show up in a sort of like a small hologram uh p4 is an uh sort of like a protocol droid but has synthetic skin, synth skin, sort of like put over not all every part of their body, but definitely the face and the and the hands. Um, also, probably like on the neck, there's probably like a neck flap uh, that comes down as well. And they are wearing clothes to sort of like cover some of the bits that aren't uh, that aren't covered by synth skin. Um, and their mouth moves sort of. Like, you know how animatronics, uh, like early animatronics have like their, their like rubber lips. It's kind of moves with it, but there's not like 100% lip action. So yeah. it like feels really, yeah. Uh, L-O-R-N-A. Hello. What can I help you with? Hello, P4. There's been a development in our assignment. You are looking used as usual. <laughs> Well-born. Is that related? First of all, how dare you, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> well observed. It was quite a feat, but we have the evidence that you would need. Can we meet? Of course. I will set that up immediately. Let us aim for tomorrow at Sokoljal Tower. That works wonderfully for us. It will give us time to rest. We'll all be in attendance, or should we just expect you? I will meet you there. We will escort you. One question. Is that what you will be wearing to the meeting? You know what? Never mind. It's not important. You can arrive at the tower in whatever state that you decide is appropriate. All right. I will let my teammates know. Excellent. This is very good to hear. Send the details over, and we will see you tomorrow. And Ella will hang up. You immediately get information to meet at the tower um, the following day, and you know it says like, "Please bring the please bring the evidence that you have, so that we can verify it." And you will be paid the rest of the amount agreed upon, as well as taking care of the person in question we are holding for you and then there's like a take care of yourself <laughs> <laughs> who are they holding for us uh they're holding a body they're holding a bounty hunter body oh sh- that's right mm-hmm. <laughs> the guy. maybe we blow up the, the penthouse maybe he's up there and doesn't exist <laughs> completely unrelated event for his death at the uh as you get this over with you hear um Gur, he sort of like bumps into you at the ship and he's like you are not looking so hot hello do you mind if i take a look and just kind of patch you up a little bit i don't have to i you know whatever i'm just offering i'm bored 
I can't tell if it's like genuine boredom or if this is Gur's way of being like, I mean, I could help, I guess, and be a part of the team or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could you could make a role if you want to know for sure. Uh, yeah. Ca- how how would I do that? What's insight for Star Wars? I think it's probably charm or cool. Charm or cool. I have the same. You know what? We'll call it an average check. Well, no, we'll call it a hard check. Okay. Gur is a little difficult to read, but you can have a blue die because ba- you know Bothans. Okay. You've been around Bothans, so. Three advantages, three failures. Ah. Yeah, you can't tell if he's like, you can't tell if he's like genuinely bored or if he's trying to contribute. But you know that he, I, I mean, the advantages I think are, you know, he's good for it, maybe. I, I don't mm. know if that's good enough. I mean, he put me together, so I know that he at least is capable of fixing me up. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you know he's being sincere, at least, in that he, yeah, is capable okay. and, like, can do it. I think when Ello's trying to figure this out and doing this, you said co- it was cooler charm check on him, you see, like, a, a little flash to their eyes, like, almost as if it's a scan of, like, what are these behaviors? I mean, if you have the time, girl, I would sincerely appreciate it. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's do it. I, I need to uh, I need to be doing something. You know what I mean? Yes, I often need to be organizing myself. Yeah, I, I, I've seen that. Everything is like whew, pristine uh, order. Everything in its place. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, can I confess something to you? Of course, girl. Uh, every once in a while, I will just move something over just to see if. If you notice, and I, I mean you do, I have noticed that you have noticed because then it is right back in the place. So, <laughs> what is up with that? Yes, I have noticed that occurrence four hundred and twenty-seven times on the ship so far. <laughs> wow, <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot. That's how. Wow, I must really be bored. Let's fix you up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he takes you to, uh, well, I guess he probably, like, takes you to his space, you know? Like, he's got, that's where he's got his tools and things like that. And, um, so you, like, sit on the edge of the, the bed that's, that's there or in a chair or something, and he's just working on you. Yeah, and he's just, like, fixing you up and, like, removing that, like, gunk that's happening. Just make sure that's all patched up and everything. And it's kind of in silence for a little bit. He's just kind of like concentrating on doing that. But the two of you are, are sitting there uh, just working on this. Ello is sort of taking into what Gur has turned his face into. Um, I'm sure that it is Gur all over the place in this little room that he's sort of taken over. Uh, and for some reason I picture it very messy. Um, but (laughs) I don't think it would be in silence for the entire time. I think Ella would eventually direct their attention over to what Gur is doing, watching them sort of solder and, and, and scrape away whatever they're, they're doing. And Ella is going to ask Gur, so what's next for you, Gur? What's the plan? Uh, well, in terms of like jobs and stuff. Is that what you're saying? Like, work? Well, yes. I know that you work with the Bothan Spy Network, and I wasn't sure if that bridge had been burned or if you were looking for something more short-term. I can neither confirm nor deny that. Hello, you know that. Of course, of course. Honestly, uh, I want to get this ship repaired, and it's going to cost a lot of credits. So... Uh, you have done. You have put your uh, uh, time in and really damaging this thing. So, so I think that uh, you owe me a little bit uh, of that helping me trying to fix this up. But we can discuss that later. So I don't know. I guess that is what is on my mind. And leaving Sokoro. Yes, I'm quite excited to get off this dusty planet. And, and, and he gets quiet again, and then he's like, What the... So what did... 
what did you and Borsk do, um, you know, before he, uh, what were you doing? What was he doing? You mean for work, generally, or for fun? Uh, either, anything. Well, we would travel from planet to planet, shipping mostly, cargo sometimes unidentified. I see. Did he ever talk about Bathawui or things he missed from Bathawui? Uh, and then Ello's gonna sort of quiet up a little bit and uh, maybe lower the volume of their voice and say, Towards the end, he was quite fond of it there, yes. Very nostalgic indeed. I see. Well, I do have to check in at some point, so I don't know. Maybe I can, maybe I can go back there too. Maybe that is on my mind as well. I'm not. I don't know. Uh, anyway, you're about done. So sometimes it's nice to connect to your roots. Uh, and Ella's gonna gonna get up and give like uh, a grateful sort of pat on the shoulder to Gur, and before leaving Gur's space, he's gonna say, thank you. Hopefully, this will all go well, and we can continue our conversation about your father. I'd love to answer any other questions you may have. I'm sure he'd love for you to know more about him. You think you're going to survive this? One must be hopeful. And Ella will sort of like solemnly nod and and leave Gur to his messy room. Yeah, so Elo's fixed up, no critical injury. Yay. If there's anything else that you guys want to do, I mean, let's fast forward time a little bit and get um get things happening. Oh, one other thing. Big X. As you're working on your deck and you're like making all these programs, you get a uh, a message pops up. It's on an unsecured line and it's just a text message, like sort of like an email, but like unsecured. And it says, waited on Tatooine for a while. No one showed up. Thought maybe you said Dantooine headed there, needed some creds. Had to sell my deck. Ended up doing work with some group on Dantooine. Now we're headed to the unknown regions near Lahan. Maybe we can safely rendezvous in that area. Also, I'm kind of a pirate now. Ah! <laughs> As he reads his message, his jaw just drops and drops and drops. And he'll quickly like save it. He's like, whatever the key, key commands is on his deck for saving it. And he'll... Lean back in the seat. <laughs> Pirate. Ah, guy's got a lot more resources than I thought. He'll look on a star map at where Lahond is. That you that's easy to pull up. Um So I'm thinking of how I'm gonna do this. Okay, I I I'll give you what like basic knowledge of like what everyone would know. And if you want to know more. You, you can make a roll for it, but... Okay, I, I think basic stuff is fine for now. Okay, so Lahan is in the um, unknown regions of, of space. It's, like, beyond the outer rim, even. It's not places that's, like, super mapped or anything. That area, it'd be kind of like uh, him saying, um, like... Hey, I'm going to Antarctica. Like, maybe we can, maybe I'll see you in Antarctica. Like, maybe we'll meet up <laughs> there. Like, there's nothing out there. Like, it's all, you know, like. Oh, boy. And it's just not super mapped. Like, a couple of strategic light jumps could get you into that area. But Lahan's the only thing that, that's really mapped out there. And it's just kind of like a, a planet that's not um, inhabited by, uh, by people, not inhabited by beings that, like, live on it. Help. Oh. Say the message, close it, shake his head. Ah, after. That's for after. And then he'll continue working on what he's doing. And we leave Big Axe on that. 
LO in a different part of the ship. Maybe there's a split screen of the two, kind of like our Skype window now. We see these two beings preparing for the next part of the plan, grappling with their own issues, trying to prioritize the things that they must do now over the things that occupy their thoughts off-world. And they are preparing to leave Sokoro, which, for better or for worse, will be changed forever. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Respect the Crit, Empire's Edge. If you like what you heard, please consider supporting us by giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It's easy, free, and helps other people learn about the show. And we love reading your feedback. For more information about the show, visit at Respect the Crit on Twitter and Instagram. Or come chat with us on our official Discord server. Big Axe is played by Alex Herrera, who you can find on Twitter at A.E. Herrera or on his Twitch channel, WadeWolf10. L.O. is played by Jamie Lee Bonez, who you can find on Instagram at jamielee.bones. I'm Ian Duncan, your GM and MC, and you can find me at idunks on Twitter and Instagram. The original music featured in this episode is provided with license or permission by a variety of talented artists whose information and credits are linked in the show notes. Please support them by visiting their platforms to check out more of their work and tell them how much you like their music in our show. The Star Wars role-playing system is published by Fantasy Flight Games. And remember, whatever the system, whether it's a miss or a hit, you always gotta respect Back the crit. Thank you very much, and may the force be with you. Uh, one second, sorry. There's a siren going by, and an ice cream truck. I think it's doubling. I think the, I think <laughs> it's the. We're gonna we're gonna defund the LAPD, and they're gonna have to run around in ice cream trucks, which is gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs>